Welcome to another exciting Bible study with Reverend Dr. James A. Duncan, pastor of Shiloh Baptist Church. Faith study in the Word is designed to keep you fired up about your walk with the Lord. Fired up about our faith study in the Word with Pastor Duncan, author, teacher, and long-term educator with a burning desire to see every believer live a full life of faith in the redeeming power of God. This can only happen when we develop a hunger and thirst for studying the Word, God's Word. Thanks for joining us in tonight's study.
continue our journey on one of the most exciting books in the Bible, and that is the book of Psalms. So tonight, we're not going to waste any time. I want you to go right with me to Psalms 46. Go to Psalms 46. Grab your Bible, grab whatever instrument you're using, grab your pad, grab your phone. The Psalms, what we're going to talk about now is going to give you some anointed deliverance, some anointed uh, way to exhort God. It's going to give you a way to handle the pressures of your day. So have you got it yet? Go to Psalms 46. Let me read this and look at the power in Psalms 46. We're going right to the Word of God. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in a time of trouble. Right there. I can pack up and we can go home. If you took that verse to bed with you, if you took that verse the next time you're pressured over money or you're pressured or worried and, and your mind is getting clouded with all the things you have to do and the stuff you have to deal with. If you're like me, you start a day and sometimes your day has too many things and sometimes you want to just back up and tell it to start again. But listen to the psalmist. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. That's Psalms 46 and 1. In that 10th verse of that same psalm, one of my favorite verses of the whole Bible, and I know I'm not the only one who uses it, and I know somebody right here tonight, you tuned in so God could remind you of it. It says, be still and know that I'm God. When the pressure is on, when you're struggling, one of the worst, one of the Worst things in the world to be told is to be still. My mind is racing a thousand miles an hour. I don't have a remedy. I don't have any way of getting through this. And all of a sudden, I hear a voice from heaven inside my heart saying, be still and know that I'm God. That's the power of Psalms. This is a series on your favorite Psalms because all of us have been affected by the same Psalms. So I want you to hear this. We're going to study Psalms, and I want you to know what it is. It means songs of worship and praise. When the Psalms were made, it's called Tehillim, or praise songs. Tehillim in the Hebrew means that all the songs, if you can imagine, at feast days and at festivals and at times, they were sung and read so that the people could get deliverance. You tuned in to the right study tonight. Let's go to the Word of God and find some of the most richest passages in the Word of God that's going to just light your fire because once we begin reading and feel the context of these folk, some were nomads, some felt like they were dying, some were in situations they didn't know how they were going to make it through. I want you to know that that's what this is, praise songs. When you're in doubt, a song, a song, praise to God. In the English, it just means psalms. In the Greek, it's samoi. Um, also, the meaning is songs of praise. That's what we have, songs of praise. So I want you to see this. First of all, we got to study who wrote the psalms. Many times, you guys, I'm, I'm going to pick up very quickly because we talked about David. David wrote most of the psalms. And we'll say, David wrote most of the psalms. Eh, kind of true. But if you look in the Bible, David wrote 73 psalms. Matter of fact, um, 75 in total, but some are not in actually the book of Psalms. One of the Psalms David wrote is in Acts chapter 4, verse 25. Another one is in uh, Hebrews chapter 4 and 7. So all these Psalms David wrote. David wrote 73 Psalms, but there are 150 Psalms. So who wrote the rest of them? We found out that Asaph and family wrote 12 Psalms. The sons of Korah, they wrote 11 psalms. So psalms or songs, God supplied us with anointed words that would bless us as we were in our situation. There's nothing as great as laying in your bed in distress and having a word go through your mind through the psalms that God has planted us. So Asaph, sons of Korah, David, we also find a guy named Heman. Heman, not, not He-Man, the cartoon guy, but Heman, and we found out he wrote one psalm. He was also part of the sons of Korah. We found out Solomon. David's son Solomon wrote two psalms, and that's exciting. Moses 
wrote a psalm. Psalm 90 is attributed to Moses. So that's the author. Now you got to go back to part one of this message last week. And I told you because today we're going to get into the actual psalms and understanding of the writing of psalms. Ethan the Ezraite wrote one psalm. And then the rest of the psalms, 48 psalms, are anonymous. Are you still with me? 48 psalms are anonymous. Now let's go into, because today we want to go into something that's very important. There's a divine structure to the psalms. A divine structure into how the psalms are written. Divine structure of the psalms. Let's do that. Psalms are traditionally divided into five books. So when you hear someone saying the book of, book of, really there's five books in the books of psalms. And that encompasses all 150 psalms. There are five books. The five books that we believe are representative of the authors when they went in to write, representative of the Torah. But we believe the Jews, when the Psalms began to be written, wanted to say this is the new Torah or the new uh, writing of God that must be read. And so it represents those five books of the Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So we know that the five books of the Psalms, the divisions, is what we're going to study. You need to know this because as you're reading Psalms, each division has something special within a division. There's a part. So I broke this down so you understand all five divisions. Book one of the Psalms says God is beside us. So we're going to look at all the Psalms from Psalms 1, technically from Psalms 3, all the way down till we get to 41. We're going to find out that God is beside us. Then book two starts at Psalms 42. We're going to find out God is going before us. Listen. When you were reading the Psalms, you may not have understood why you had so much power in the Psalms. Because the reality is, God is beside us. God is going before us. And that's the power. Book 3 says, God is around us. So when you were reading the Psalms, I bet you didn't know. As you read, you were bringing God into these special positions or special perspectives of God. That's why you receive so much uh, peace. And that's why you receive so much calmness as you were reading the psalm because wherever you were reading you were in one of these five books book four says god is above us those are the ones that exalt god that bring god glory that let you know how good god is and then book five says god is among us let's recap god is beside us book one god is going before us book two god is around us god is above us god is among us all the psalms, when we read, hear me, for someone going through. When you read a psalm, you actually bring God down where you are. And we know when God inhabits the praises of his people. So when you read that word to God, you're bringing God down in one of these positions. He's either coming beside you, he's going to be around you, he's going to be among you, he's going to walk up. I mean, it is powerful to know that each one of these psalms, each one of these books have a division. Today, I'd like to point out, two beautiful aspects of this. The first is our relationship to the Lord. You need to write that down. As you read the psalm, look what's going on in heaven. As I'm reading the psalm back to God, God has the context of when it was uh, actually written, what was in the heart of his servant who wrote it. And believe it or not, that spirit that's in that psalm is what's coming to deliver you. We started off with God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. When you read that and you're in trouble, that psalm magnifies the power of God. So I want you to know that each book has a predominant position of God. And secondly, I want to bring you familiar with the word doxology. You know where the real deliverance in the word of God comes from is when we worship God, a doxology is nothing but the expression of praise. It is, it is my heart exploding with what God has done. You, you've had a doxology, whether you think you have or not. Sometimes when you're sitting and the tears are going down your face and you know you're looking for help and you read a word of God and all of a sudden an expression explosion of praise comes forth. I'll tell you what, have you ever been riding down the road and all of a sudden you had problems, but the word was meditating? Maybe you had it on your car radio and all of a sudden that word sent an explosion of worship to God. A doxology is something that enlightens or uh, turns on 
the heart of God. So whenever you begin to praise in fullness, you are bringing God into the scene. So let's look at book one. Book one goes from Psalms 1 to Psalms 42. Excuse me, 41. So 1 to 41 says, God is beside us. And this is emphasized that we go to uh, Psalms 1. Everyone knows it. Blessed is the man who walketh not in, you know, in the mindset or the power of the ungodly, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. You know, we, we talk about that, and we're going to read the exact, the exact psalm, because there's many variations, and I want you to hear the NIV version when we get to it. But it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the seed of scorn. That, um, well, we know the scripture. I'm, I'm going to get to it so I can give you the NIV. But what I want you to see is, it talks about meditates on the word of God like a tree planted by the streams of the water. He prospers in everything that he does. It's a great example of God's blessing coming to us because the psalm is telling us God is beside us. Let's do it again. Another example is found in Psalm 3. The Lord is my shepherd. He's right there. I shall not want. He's right there. What the psalmist is saying here, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still water. All that is saying, when I'm talking about that, it's talking about the power of God. Listen to the biblical application. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Well, we know we want every day. But when you look at the power of the word, it's saying, if God is beside me, whatever I want for, I can ask and it will be supplied by the word of God. Right? So Psalms 20, we're going to go to Psalms 20. So Psalms 1, uh, walk if not in the counsel of the ungodly, uh, stand up in the seat of the, uh, stand up in the seat of the scornful. Just you, you can look at the psalm and go down and see that God is telling us, I'm beside you, and if you do these things, you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. But let's look at Psalms 20. I want you to turn to Psalms 20. This is where I was trying to get to. Psalms 20. One of those powerful psalms in the world. Again, you will see the psalm starts off to the chief musician, David. Watch this. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defends thee. Send help from the sanctuary. You reading with me? And strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Remember I told you that Selah is just a rest. You don't have to read Selah. But look at the power of the psalm. Can we meditate on it for just a minute? Because this psalm has set me free in a lot of stressful situations. Psalms 20. Psalms 20. Look. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. God said, I not only am a God that will be with you in good times, but I am a God that will hear you in the day of trouble. The comfort of that is I'm just not speaking words in the air. Some of you, uh, you're not like me. I can be seen sometimes walking. You might think I'm crazy when I'm talking, but I'm really talking to God. And I'm talking to God about the situation I'm in because the best thing that we know as Christians is God hears us. The scripture says God hearing me is paramount to or it means God is going to answer me. So I want someone to know, I don't know what you're going through tonight. I dare you to get off into a corner. Remember this Psalm of David. And remember what it says. The Lord will hear you in the day of trouble. I don't know if that's your day now. The name of the God of Jacob, the family. Oh my God. We know the Bible always puts emphasis on names. So the name of the God of Jacob, we talked about it, Yahweh, Jehovah, Elohim. All of those names are power names which describe our God. All of us like to talk about Jehovah Jireh, the God who will provide. You remember in Genesis when he had provided a ram in the bush when he told Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. All I'm saying is you have to know whose name you're calling on. When I call on the name of God, when I call on the name of Jesus, a power happens. Something happened and the psalmist is saying, watch this, God's name will defend us. There's something powerful in the name 
of Jesus. Why? You ask why? I know you're not asking why. When the psalmist, we didn't even go to Psalms 22. When we look at the psalms and see the prophetic nature of them all pointing to Christ. Christ as is part of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Each one have a role to provide. Each one, God is the creator. The Son is the Savior. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. Each one has a role. And in that role, their power is emphasized and has no power on earth that can destroy the name of Jesus. Come on. You know Philippians where it says, every knee must bow. Philippians chapter 2. Every tongue confess. That Jesus is Lord. That's another name for God. When we say Lord, the universe bows down to God. When we say Lord, the universe knows we just called on somebody. Every knee. What knee? When I say Jesus, whatever's going on in my life has to bow or take a lower seat to Jesus. So when I pray for healing in the name of Jesus... Something happens in the atmosphere. Why? Not because I'm praying, but because of that name. Someone feels that anointing coming where you are. There's power in the name of Jesus. And we know where that divine heavenly power came from. The son came down and said, make me a body. I'll be the ultimate sacrifice. He replaced all the goats and the bulls and all the other kind of sacrifices. And he died on the cross. And because he died obedient to God, the Bible says when he got up, he got up with all power in his hands. But it is the legacy of that name. You know, names mean something. And because of the power associated with the name, it brings the blessing. So anybody listening to me, even if you want to cut me off right now, go somewhere and just say, Jesus, something's going to happen. His name will defend you. The God of Jacob. I wish I could go into the history, but I need to move on into book one. Send you help from the from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. Remember all the offerings except the burnt sacrifice. That he has. So we're still talking about he will grant. Look at all the things that the psalmist is saying he will do. He will grant according to your heart and fulfill all thy counsel. Uh, whatever I'm seeking from God, he hears in my heart. This is really weird when you read the language. It's saying, God hears what's in my heart. He may not give me what I want, but he gives me what I need. He comes along and supersedes. Uh, the Holy Spirit can pray for things that I don't know about. So what God does is he comes along. This is so good. When you pray, God's turned that prayer. Uh, if I could use a fast food analogy here, he supersizes it. What is a supersize? He knows the appetite and he makes it fit what I need. I'm praying for something and God is saying that's not what that boy really needs. So God goes behind me, supersized, interprets my real need and he blesses me what I need. Many of you know God has gone behind your back, blessed you with something you need. I could even go back to your salvation. You didn't bargain for all of this. I know I did. I called on God one night uh, out of desperation. You know, everybody got saved, didn't get saved out of desperation. But I was in denial and desperation. Maybe somebody can identify with me. You know what I'm saying? I was out in the world. I was doing my thing. But there was no, I was getting no satisfaction, no benefits, no matter what I poured into it. I got on my knees and prayed. And I, 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 you, you can go back to hear my testimony. Powerful testimony. I got down on my knees in somebody's driveway and prayed to God. And the, the voice that began to speak to me was because God knew, oh, hallelujah. He knew what I needed was not some quick remedy. He knew at that moment that I really needed a change of life. Do you hear what I'm telling you? When you pray, God fulfills your heart. He takes the counsel that he takes counsel with us. And, and I would like to think that he not only counsels with us because as I said before, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, they counsel on our behalf. You got God up in heaven having a meeting about your needs. God. It's awesome how I love this. Which brings us to the next statement. It says, we will rejoice in your salvation. In the name of our God, we will set up our banners. He will be a banner was what they took into battle. So in order to know, let people know who it was that was protecting you. 
who it was you were fighting for. You had a name or you had a banner and the banner was a fighting term that that's who's fighting my battles. I don't know who you're fighting with, but that's who's fighting my battle. It's almost like now, uh, you ever seen people go crazy, crazy, crazy over their football teams? Come on, I'm talking cray, cray. You know what I'm saying? Some people, I saw one guy, he painted himself the color of his team. He's got a bumper sticker. He's taken his car and just destroyed it because he's such a fan. So he goes all out. That's the kind of fanatic, fan, fanatic. We should be about God. If someone asks you how you made it, God, if someone asks you who's going to help you out of this mess, God, what am I doing? I'm wearing my banner. I'm saying, praise the Lord. David said in Psalms 34, we're in the Psalms right now. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Because when you get so excited about God, he's your banner. You know how you go to church? And when you're in church, you got quiet people. I know because of the pandemic, we haven't been in church. And boy, do I miss that whole church feedback and atmosphere. I'm getting used to talking to you guys and talking in the cameras. But man, when you see someone's face light up, when a scripture is said or a point is made in a sermon or a principle and someone said, that's it. Amen. Hallelujah. You just hit me. That's letting you know the Holy Spirit is present. And because of his presence, he's in there fighting, interceding for me in my battle. And all of a sudden, I lift up my banner. And I begin to praise God. You've seen folk. Now know I that the Lord saves his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. I want you to read that yourself if you're looking at your phone or your tablet or your Bible. Now I know. Those are three of the most powerful words that a saint can have. There is theory, theoretical worship. And then there is worshiping from a position that says, now I know, now I know how important my God is. I believe that he will bless us. He will hear from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. So I know that God has saved me and saved me with his hand. And that just gives all the credit again back to God. Some trust, oh, this is the verse. Some trust in chariots. You know, chariots with a you know, cool stuff of that day. You, you had to be in a high bracket to have a chariot. You know, you weren't just, you weren't just some low class person. You were at least middle class with low income. You had a chariot. Some trust in the chariots. And horses, horses are more valuable than that. We will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen. Here's what it's saying. Whatever you trust in that's not God is not going to help you. Let's stop this teaching and make some application. Say this with me. Some trust in chariots. Come on, say it. Some trust in their horses. But we will always remember, I'll add a word there, to trust in the name of the Lord our God. Why? Because they're brought down. That stuff doesn't work. But we find ourselves risen and we stand up. Say, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. David goes on to say that there's no reason to fear any evil because God is always with us. Right in the middle, going back to book one, Psalms 20 is powerful. We can just stay there and read it and apply it. But let's finish and make sure we understand book one. In the middle of book one is a series of Psalms, 15 to 24, that opens and closes with a call of covenant faithfulness. Not popular. All right, Pastor, going back to the praise and the good stuff. It's not popular to say that I have to be faithful. One of the most powerful words in the world is covenant. God made a covenant with us. And the covenant God made with you is, think about this. God never gets you off of his mind. He never stops thinking about you. He doesn't have to run around for resources. He doesn't have to find the stuff you need. The covenant he made with us, it's better than getting a covenant with the richest man in the world. It's better than having any kind of money on this earth cannot describe being in covenant with God. If I was in covenant, let's just say some of you women like Oprah, we talk about Oprah money. You know, Oprah money different from other folk money. Tyler Perry's money, not too bad. But if we were talking Bill Gates money, whatever it is, you know what? If you knew you had a direct line to Bill Gates and you looked in the cupboard, 
and the grocery is kind of low, but you can get on the phone and say, hey, Bill, uh, can you lend me or can you front me? Or I have a covenant with you that you're going to take care of my needs whenever I need it. Well, you know what I need right now? I need about, uh, give me uh, $10,000. To Bill Gates, $10,000 is nothing. Let me, let me share something with you. To Bill Gates, I want to see the part here clearly. Watch this. The covenant of faithfulness. God is so faithful that if we're just faithful a little, and I know I'll get no argument from anybody here with that. You know why? Because if we're just faithful a little, God said he's going to bless us. And you know how I know that's true? Because many of us will tell you, I've only been faithful a little. Kind of close. I had to take my glasses off because I'm this close. Psalm 16 and 18, Read, watch this, uses David as a model of faithfulness. David, yo, I'm not trying to set the bar low. Don't you ever fall for it. David had a history of time with God. One of the things we missed in the depths of God's word is taking some time to just spend time with God. I'm serious. You know how you say you can't have a relationship if you don't spend time with people? How do you think you got this great relationship with God when all you do is spend time with church folk but no time with God? You read your Bible, you know the word, but you don't know the person who is anointing or blessing the words. What am I telling you? Faithfulness comes from a call of God. Look what David says. David said, I want to model something to you. Man, when I messed up with Bathsheba, I had all these folk talking about this, but you know what I did? I ran to God. You know why David knew that? Because it really doesn't make a difference what anyone says but God. Right now, if you're in a difficult situation, even if you want, look, even if you want to wait till this sermon is over, this teaching is over, I dare you to go somewhere, read a psalm back to God. Oh, a power that will come in your life and read one that has what you need. Let's look. Between 16 and 18, David is used as this model of a faithfulness to God. What does that mean? Let's look at it. Psalm 16, I chose because I wanted you to, I wanted you to see why David is used because he had an up and down relationship with God. He really loved God. You know, there's more of us like David and Peter than we are like some other folk in the Bible because David was one, he knew he loved God, but he was making a lot of mistakes. He knew he loved God. He made some big mistakes. We made big mistakes. Isn't this something how God covers our mistakes? Why? Not because he's just covering up. He covers to the point that he wants to bless us or preserve us. I chose Psalm 16 to show you the middle portion of this book so you can understand something. I can't teach. I'm going to read. I want you to read it with me. That's what this text is. That's what this class is about. That's what this teaching is about. Getting that word in us. Can I read this like, you know, like a preacher? Let me get the preacher for you. Preserve me, O God. For in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord. My goodness extendeth to thee. Can you hear heaven open as your heart cries out, Preserve me, O God. That can't come from somebody empty and shallow and don't know what God is. That comes from somebody hurting but knows that God is a faithful God. Know that they have a covenant with God. I messed up. The world knows. It's on Facebook. It's on social media. It's everywhere. But man, when I get to a place, I will get on my knees and say, preserve me, oh God. And a power will come. My soul has said, the Lord, thou art my Lord. Thy goodness extended. Now, watch this. But to the saints that are in the earth, to the excellent, in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. I'm only stopping on parts that I, I get shook up about. If you think there's something out there better than God, I have to question that you've ever really tasted or trusted God. I'm telling you right now, I don't care how demanding the spirit is telling you to backslide or spirit telling you to give up or spirit telling you you can't make it. I dare you to look in the face of a faithful God, put all his faithfulness up on the wall and watch yourself gravitate to him. Look what it says. He says that um, their sorrows will be multiplied. 
my sorrows will multiply. That hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will not will not I offer, nor take up their names in my lips. Of course, they're talking about making sacrifices to idols or vain gods who they know can't help them. You know, we may sacrifice to idols, right? I mean, we would go out and drink till we were drunk, or you'd run around and, and go to the God, to the God of fornication. Uh, I'm going to offer my body. And then we offer your body to a point that your body's worn out. Your integrity is shot. You're, you're, you're insecure inside because God never meant us to use our bodies in that way. You're bouncing from one relationship to the another, giving yourself away. Then you find yourself sitting there saying, what happened? Because you can't find peace in the God of fornication, the God of addiction, the God of self-gratification, the God of, of ignorance, or, or should I say, the God of being arrogant. All of us serve those gods. But look what he said, that, that those gods will leave you in a place where you won't have your problem solved. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My reigns also instruct me in the night season. Really? David just laid out the up and down, but the trust of God because it's part of our heritage. Do you know you have an inheritance from God that's laid out in the Psalms? But I like this, in my night seasons. I love that. If you haven't gone through one now, I remember in my life, I could lay out here, I went through some night seasons. Some seasons where I know that what I was going through was darkness. I was trying to be stable. But even in those night seasons, just like David, I wasn't all that faithful. I'm telling myself, but God was faithful. So in the night season, when I couldn't move, God protects. I'm telling somebody that in the night season. You want to get a powerful song? Read Psalms 16 and know. And we're not just talking about, you know, when you're sitting around, you can't sleep, or you're sitting around. We're talking about real struggles of darkness in your life. I have set the Lord always before me, because He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad. My glory rejoices. My flesh shall rest in hope. So powerful. I'm moving on. Moving on. You got to go read this after we get done. For thou will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will thou suffer your Holy One to see corruption. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of... Can't you see? Every one of those lines is a song. In your presence, God, is the fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Once I've been dipped into the pleasures of God... The pleasures of the world pale when I know there's a God. And that's why uh, the old folk used to sing a song and say, I steal away. Sometimes, you know, and, and, and we're, we're, this is a good time to talk about this. It was an old slave song where they say, I will steal away, steal away home. Can you imagine being whipped in the field, back bloody, knowing that your children may be ripped from you and sold? knowing you're going back to some substandard quarters, you may not have anything to eat, and you're sitting there, and the next day you got to go out and work from sun up to sundown. You're somebody's chattel. You're somebody's property. You're owned. And yet, in the midst of all of this hell, that's what it was, they could get on their knees and say, sometimes life is so bitter that I have to steal away, steal away home. I steal away to the presence of God and I am sustained. Don't you sit there and go crazy. Don't sit there and get beat up. Steal away. Find the presence of God as in this book. Book 1, Psalms 19, right in the middle of the section, praises God for the power of his word. We're going to talk about Psalms 19 as one of our favorite. Book 1 closes with the doxology of Psalms 41, 13. Blessed be the Lord the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting, 
Amen and amen. This is only book one. I want you to go and read some of these psalms that I laid out. Read Psalms 1. Uh, Walk if not in the counsel of God, stand in the place of sinners, sit if not in the seat of the scornful. All of those. Read Psalm 16. Read Psalms 20. Read Psalms 41. And one of the best things we can do is blessed be the Lord or give God glory. Like, uh, God, I want to bless you so good. I just want to bless your name. I want to tell somebody who you are from everlasting to everlasting. Can I go back? I'm very close. I got to go back real quick. I want to go back. My, my, um, and my glory rejoices, my flesh also shall rest in hope. My brothers and sisters, you have hope because if no one else is around, this first book of Psalms tells us God is beside us. Go back and read these Psalms with a different flair for God and watch the power of God come into your heart. And remember, as we close tonight, your flesh will rest in hope because of who God is. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you tonight that we have your word and your Psalms to bless us and take us through our struggles. But most of all, God, we know that the Psalm was written by you through the heart of the psalmist who were in situations just like us. And you wrote these words so we could rest in hope. God bless someone going through now. Let them take your word and know it's a song in their heart. In Jesus' name, amen. It's Pastor Duncan saying, join us again next week. We're going to continue in the book of Psalms. Please, go out and tell somebody. This, uh, as we go through these psalms, I haven't even gotten to the favorite ones yet. I'm just reading through the books, reading various psalms. But then we're going to go to those favorites and we're going to break them down and get blessed by what God is saying. God bless you. See you next week. This is Pastor Duncan. Thank you for tuning in to one of the most exciting ministries out there. I want you to know what you just saw is a different change in our Bible study. You know, normally I'm in the sanctuary and we're doing that. But I wanted to get more intimate in the study mode. I wanted to be able to, you know, talk to you and have the word closer to me. So what I want you to do, if you'll do this for us, it'll help us. We want you to send us a chat. Hit me up in the chat column, look at the Bible study, and let me know where we can improve. Throw it on us. I don't care how critical your comments, everything you do is for the glory of God. Here's what you need to know about Shiloh. We're trying to have the best ministry we can have. We're getting the equipment, we're getting the people, and people, I just want to say, you got to know my uh, staff, my sound room staff, and the staff that's doing the recording. There's a whole lot to this, but we're starting to love it, because I believe if you don't put anything in, you don't put anything out, um, I really miss that back and forth. You know, in the tradition of our preaching, it's always a amen and a back and forth. Preaching is never just a di you know, monologue, it's a dialogue, but I'm getting used to feeling the Spirit of God here. All I need you to know is there's a lot of excitement, there's a lot of energy in Shiloh Ministry. Please, let me tell you where you can do it. Go to our Facebook page. Make sure that you put like on our Facebook page so you can get all the times that we go on the air. We have morning devotions. Uh, we have devotions by our young adults, our millennials. You ought to hear. These young people are blowing my mind with the way they preach the Word of God. Then we have something on Sunday after our morning worship just for the, the young ones. We have a, a, a children's church kind of Bible study. And those people are doing that. I, I got the wrong name. Don't get me later for getting the wrong name. But what I'm telling you is there's some exciting things and we're doing the best we can. We need your help. Hit us up. Please. Join us Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock. Just to let you know, we still do a parking lot service, but we also have a service on YouTube and on Facebook that will bless you and let you see what's going on in Shiloh Baptist Church. And if you really, really want to know, we have a ministry here that was called Beyond the Walls. We had to change the name because we're doing some stuff. And now it's called Building Better Lives. Please join our ministry, come to our ministry, see what we're doing. And this is an appeal for your help. All we want to do is bring a better ministry for the glory of God. It's not easy. I see all kind of cool ministries out there doing all kind of stuff. All we can do is go one step at a time. And we want you to know, spread the word. We're getting better. 
So if you tuned in and something happened live and now, I tell you, it's better now. So tune back in. Catch us on there. This is Pastor Duncan. We have an array of ministers. Get familiar with our, our church by going to our website, www.shilohbaptistchurches. And you're going to see some exciting things. And the word is exciting. The people are exciting. The singing is exciting. And it's a place where you can be sure that God will get the glory. God bless you. This is Pastor Duncan. But don't forget, hit me up in that chat. Let me know what you think about our ministry so we can make adjustments based on you. Please, did I say please? Please hit us up. It'll help us and you'll be bringing glory to God. We thank you tonight. God bless you. Love it that you guys tune in every week to hear us and support us. But please help us become a better ministry. God bless.